A thunderous slam echoed the chamber of the 500 gods of life. All chatter died down to a whisper, then silence. The elected council god Metadine spoke. Welcome to the gathering commencement. Unfortunately, we have much to talk about in such little time. I have scheduled this commencement to end after Aquarius collapses and completes its cycle to becoming a black hole. We will celebrate once it's complete. But that's only 20 million of my children's years, the god of the Mechites, Oharet, proclaimed. How are we supposed to discuss the matters of the universe in such a short amount of time? He wore a sorrowful expression on his face as he had to shut out the prayers trying to reach him during the gathering. He then sent a messenger to his children to worry not. He will return. Be good and keep praying. 499 messengers flocked out of the gathering to heed their god's words. Um, Gaia, should... Do you have any words you would like me to send? Her messenger quietly asked. Gaia turned to her messenger. The rose crown adorned her silky blonde hair. Her seated posture is upright and elegant. I figured you would want to watch one of these. You always nagged about it. She states with a perfect grin. I am only human. I don't live nearly long enough to record the entire session, Gaia's messenger said. She responded promptly. Did you decide that? Her messenger tried backtracking. No, I don't decide such things. Perfect, you'll stay. Gaia was interrupted by the elected council god. We don't have all the stars to wait for you to send your messenger. He looked at Gaia impatiently. My messenger stays, Gaia stated confidently. The other gods of the gathering looked at her with a shocked expression. It goes against conventions. A child amongst the gods talks. Even Gaia's messenger could not understand her plan. Although he knew she always plans, the silence was broken by the god of the arts. Is that allowed? It wasn't disallowed, Gaia responded. But how will your children receive guidance? The art god questioned genuinely. Gaia turned to the god. They will guide themselves. They'll kill themselves, said Oharet. What mother neglects her children in such a way? Gaia turned to the other. A mother who does not want children. The chamber erupted in discussion. Questions can be heard through the crash of conversations, each from a different god. How could you say such things? One god said, It is an honor to have children. Do you know how many gods would love to be in your place? The power they receive from praise? Another god shouted. Wars have been fought for children! A goddess screamed. More questions erupted from all the gods until the familiar rumble of the chamber staff slammed into the ground, indicating the council god has something to say. How could you say such things? Metadine said. With no hesitation and a hint of playfulness, Gaia responded, With my mouth. The god of the Hunaki, Kalai, who sat next to her and who resembled her the most, let out a soft, quick, and unplanned chuckle. Don't play smart with me, Gaia. Children are the lifeblood of the gods. We need them just as much as they need us. So much so that they are all created in their bonded god's image. Bonded, Gaia. You and you alone are bonded with them. You'll both die without one another. And what about the war? Entire species of children wiped out when the gods battled for power. Their gods wiped out alongside them. I know you were young during that time, but you could not have forgotten what the older gods went through, Mididine exclaimed. I remember every horror of the war. The only reason a lowly god such as I have children is due to the spaces I made available during the war. My friends, my dearest allies, the ones I call my sisters and brothers all faded away during those wretched times. Gaia leaned forward against her personal throne, smaller and less extravagant than the others. She amplified her voice for the entire chamber to hear. Shall I remind you how the war started? Almost every god here discarded us lowly gods who had no children to keep their life force strong. Once strong gods like Zeus were ignored by the likes of you, he nearly faded entirely until I adopted him into my realm. He stands strong today, ready for glory. Every cycle I adopt gods into my realm while most of you sit there, fat and slothful. And look what good that has done to your children. Oharet shot back with fury, jumping up from his throne. Your children are in shatters with different religions and virtues. They kill each other in the millions. They kill each other so much there is a running joke that every star in the universe is born of a human death. 
No other species is so lucky to have such a beautiful death, Gaia retorted. You're insane. This is insanity. You lowers cannot be reasoned with. How did you of all gods get children? Oharit yelled. Gaia's hands dug into the edges of her throne while she pierced a hole into Oharit's soul with her darkened gaze. Without any hesitation, she responded, With the blood of other gods. Enough, Medidine shouted. Gaia, you're too young to understand. I understand perfectly. Oh, great, Medidine. Gaia spoke sarcastically with a hint of disdain in her voice. The Civil War taught you something, that us lowly gods are willing to fight against injustice. But you couldn't wipe us out completely. No. You needed us to do what you called low work. The transfer of lifeblood, cleaning of the heavens, erecting shrines. A tear started forming towards the bottom of Gaia's eye in remembrance. And if one of us lowly gods on the brink of being faded away so much as takes a drop of your lifeblood to survive, they are executed and made an example of. You should be grateful we even allowed you to have children, Medidine shouted. No one let me. Gaia put extra emphasis on the last two words. You capitulated. Many on your side died, so you promised to give us seats in the Council of Life. I was a coward. I accepted while my fellow lowly gods fought. I thought it would be different. You promised me children. You gave me a planet full of single-cell ocean dwellers. Not even smart enough to understand it was alive. A cruel joke. Children are supposed to take after their god's image after all. Oharet chuckled under his breath. Most of the council grinned with delight at the thought of the lowly god having lowly children. But that was okay, Gaia continued softly. Because they were mine. I am their mother, she said, proud but tearful. I raised them, put them through every trial I could. Floods, fire, earthquakes, disease. Didn't interfere in their wars so they could find their own way. Let them dwindle in poverty, hoping they will one day choose to help one another. She turned her head away from Medidine towards the center and shouted at the rest of the gods. I may be a cruel mother, but I am the only god that truly loves her children. Enough to give them free will. Enough to train them to fight tyrant gods. The council gasped in horror. Some gods even shouting at Gaia. Blasphemous! A goddess towards the front of the council screamed at Gaia. You traitorous bitch! Another screamed. With what? Magic! You lie! Lowly gods aren't allowed magic! Said another. The crowd of gods grew less composed, hurling all sorts of insults aimed at how lowly a god Gaia is. She didn't mind, though. She was proud of her heritage. She was proud of the family of gods she came from. She was proud of her creations, and she was proud of the lowly gods she brought to live with humanity. The gods who sit in humanity's realm, watching this gathering now. I taught them of our heavens. From the background, I guided them towards the powers you hold so secret. Enchantments, blessings, and curses. And they combined what I taught them with the physical world. Gaia seemed to be praising her children for their blasphemous actions. She continued, trying to raise her voice above the deafening insults. As pointless as it was, she would keep shouting knowing that not a single god can hear her over the entire council rioting. Slowly, they started to look like me. They started to think like me. They started to act like me. Until one day, they evolved to be the spitting image of me. The tear that was hanging onto the edge of her eyelash finally fell. One day, after everything I put them through, they even called me mother for the first time. Mother Nature. She spoke her name softly as if it were the most precious few words to ever exist. The council has had enough, though. Medidine yelled for the divine soldiers to kill her at once for admitting treason, an excuse to finally get rid of her. Gaia's messenger cried for her to stop, cried for her to not leave him, cried for his goddess. He lunged at her leafy green dress and tried to drag her away from her impending doom. But Gaia just pushed him away towards Kali and smiled, tears rolling down both of her cheeks now. Kali held on tightly to Gaia's messenger. He held on to make sure he would not be killed, for the divine soldiers will not attempt to fight a high god. That would also be traitorous like Gaia, and a death sentence. When the two divine soldiers stood before Gaia with spears in hand, she did not fight. Gaia's messenger could not understand. She could win. She could at least escape. As much as her messenger screamed for her to fight, his throat tearing, his yells deafening, 
Gaia just gazed into his eyes with a soft smile. Kelai mouthed a single phrase to Gaia that got her to close her eyes and accept her death. Let another star be born. And so it was. With a single powerful thrust from each divine soldier, with no emotion portrayed, impaled humanity's goddess through her midsection. Blood splattered behind her, staining the marble floor. She dropped to her knees and fell slightly backwards only for the sharpened end of the spears to catch on to the marble and keep her up, resisting against her weight. Her eyes forcefully opened, but she tried to be stoic and resist her pain. With every exhale, blood jutted out of her mouth, flowed down her chin and neck only to stain her once magnificent dress. With one of her final breaths, she managed to weakly grab onto one of the spears that impaled her and speak one final message in defiance of death. Gaia, she coughed blood. A lowly goddess. More blood escaped her mouth. Mother to lowly children. And with that, her hand slowly released its grip and her arms fell to the floor. The twinkle in her eye slowly faded while she stared back at her messenger. She let out an elongated sigh, her chest sinking. The exact moment her life ceased, a piercing headache shot through all the gods of the universe, not solely the chamber gods. The cries of children. No. It sounded more like monsters, like beasts wailing in sorrow. It flooded the gods' minds. They could not hear their own children's prayers over the pained cries. The gods couldn't handle it. Some resorted to smashing their head against the chamber floor in a misguided attempt to get the sounds of hell to stop. But it persisted. Even after they caved their own heads in, they could still hear the tens of billions weeping. There was no escape. The divine soldiers couldn't hear it, nor any soul that wasn't a god. Kali let go of the messenger after Gaia's last breath. He held his head in pain, yet he was the only one laughing. Gaia's messenger wept in uncontrollable sorrow. He felt a piece of him missing. It was empty. There was nothing there, not even a hole. It was just... nothing. He couldn't even understand what it was he once had where the nothingness now resides. He had never noticed it before, but knows it's now gone. He's incomplete. He knows it was something good, but he can't describe what it actually was. He wants it back. He wants it back. He wants it to come back. Now. Medidine, now grasping at his head, shouted, What is happening? Kelai shouted back, They are free of a god's rule, her final gift to them. She taught them to live without a god by never showing herself, yet she stood beside them, not interfering, throughout each of their lives. He grunted in pain while never stopping his laughter. You killed their beloved goddess, Medidine, a goddess that they never saw but always felt near. He forced himself upright. When they are done mourning, Medidine, it will be your turn to pray. On the first day, humanity wept uncontrollably. On the second day, humanity reconciled. On the third day, humanity united under the nothingness that was missing in them all. On the fourth day, humanity received their messenger from Kelai. On the fifth day, humanity planned. On the sixth day, humanity honored her in their capital world. On the seventh day, humanity was restless. 